Hi guys, welcome. Welcome you guys. Hi Lori, hi Teresa. We welcome you all to our nursery farm. So today we'll be able to see some of our mares in foals and some mares in foal. And we'll start off introducing some of the mares in this paddock here. So this is a barn that has our foals that are born in March and April. So we still have a couple of mares here that have not had their foals yet. So over here we have Maggie's Melody. We've got Princess Julia who's in the middle. And then Cabo Queen is this mare with the big white face walking towards us. So these mares are still in foal. So they're in the smaller paddock because we're watching them. They're due any day now. Hi Cabo Queen. So we're keeping our eye on them. So mares will typically have their foals at night. The vast majority of foals are born at night. So these guys will stay in these small paddocks so we can observe them during the day just in case they decide they want to foal early. Then they'll come up and they'll stay in the barn at night. We watch them closely for any signs of foaling. So these mares are in foal for 11 months. That's their average gestation period. And then I've mentioned before, so we arrange all of the mares on the farm by their expected foaling dates. So what we can do is take the date she visited the stallion, which she checks in foal. We just count forward 11 months. We can estimate when she's gonna have her foal for the next year. So these mares are all due around the same time. We've got some foals we'll see today. They were all actually born on the same day. So these guys were grouped together very well. So these three mares, folklore is this mare here with the white star. Sorry, not folklore. Her name is Princess Julia. She's out of folklore. So folklore was a champion. She was a uh, champion two-year-old filly. And Princess Julia here is named after Miss Barbara Benke's daughter, Julia. We have a couple of mares in the broodmare band named after Julia. We'll see another one later on. And Cabo Queen here, she's the dam of Sally's Curlin. She's a dual grade three winner. As we'll see Rachel's Valentina very shortly here, Pamela. So Cabo Queen is the dam of Sally's Curlin. Maggie's Melody here. So she's out of Maggie Hawk. That makes her a half sister to a Fleet Alex. A Fleet Alex is a champion three-year-old, 2005. He won the Preakness Stakes and he won the Belmont Stakes. And Maggie's Melody, she's, uh, she's got another sister in the band named Storm and Maggie. We saw her in our first live tour. And Maggie Hawk is now retired from the band. So she lives over at our 64 farm. She's one of our retired mares. We've got 12 retired mares. When they do retire from the Broodmare Band, they stay with us. We take care of them for the rest of their lives. So we won't see Rachel Alexandra on this tour, but we will see Rachel's Valentina here very shortly. So when these guys have their foals, their foals are strong enough, they'll graduate to these larger paddocks. One here. But for now, these younger foals are up here in the small paddocks. So we'll go and see this group here. This farm is 460 acres. It's one of three that we have here in Kentucky. We fall out on this farm because it's the closest to some of the best equine health clinics in the world. So if for whatever reason we have to send a mare to the vet, we can get her there in 10 minutes. We'll stop here see this is Katie's kiss. She has a little blame colt you see laying in the grass there. We've got about we have an average of 80 foals each year. We got far more colts than fillies we this year. And down here towards the back, sorry. Got I'm Mom's Favorite is on the left, Val pa Valiant Passion on the right. <laughs> I 
my mom's favorite has a super saver colt. Valiant Passion has a good magic colt. So these guys will stay in these paddocks the first few weeks of their life. Just depending on the foal, as they get stronger, that's when they'll start to graduate to those big paddocks. But now is when they've got some crucial time, they can grow and mature. They can also form these bonds in the herd. So because they're all born around the same time, they're in the same developmental stage. So we don't have any foals that are much larger than the others. They can all go out together and form friendships. And that way, even when they are weaned, they're with the, the same foals that they've been with their entire lives. We've got some comfort there. But between the three farms we have here in Kentucky, so our horses will travel to each farm kind of depending on different stages of their lives. So the mares will foal here. And when the foals are weaned, the foals stay here and the mares will go to our second mare facility that's off Highway 64. The foals will stay until our yearling farm uh, empties out. So whether these foals are sold at auction or if they go down to our training center in Ocala, once the yearling farm is empty, these guys will transfer there. Then the mares will travel back to the nursery farm and kind of start the cycle back over. So we don't have any American Pharaoh babies this, just yet this year. So the mares are grouped by their expected foaling dates, Louise. And after weaning, they will stay even in mixed groups. So colts and fillies will stay together. They'll stay in those groups until they transfer over to the yearling farm. Dashing Debbie here. She is a Curlin Colt. The Dashing Debbie is the dam of Don the Destroyer who raced in the Breeders' Cup last year. The stakes winner raced in Stone Street Stables. So Deborah, all thoroughbreds are conceived via live cover, which means that these mares travel to a stallion. The meeting between the stallion and the mare. Yes, we have three different farms here. We have about 1,800 acres total. Cavorting had a colt by Curlin this year. We want to see him. We saw him in one of our other live streams. And all of these live tours, if you miss them, if you're just coming in and you missed the beginning, don't worry, we've got the Facebook live tours are saved to our Facebook page. We've got both Facebook and Instagram live saved on our YouTube channel. And Debbie here is in a paddock with a mare named Time for Roses. She's Australian bred. She also has a Curlin this year. There's two Curlin colts in this paddock. That's Dashing Debbie on the left. Time for Roses on the right. So they will stay out most of the day. So these guys are younger, so they're not out 24 seven just yet. But they won't stay up in the barn until, or unless we have some kind of serious weather. Hi, this is Dashing Debbie's Curlin Colt. So it's the best thing for them to spend a lot of time outside, run up and down the hills, grow some strong bone. Hi, little guy. So we don't stand any stallions on our farms. We do have stallions we are affiliated with. Curlin is one, the sire of this lovely guy. We also have McLean's Music, Cantharos, Good Magic, Carpe Diem at Windstar. And we have Jess's Dream, he's standing at Ocala Stud, as well as Union Jackson at Sequel. We'll move to our next paddock. You gonna come with us?
So Valentina has had her full. We'll see here in just a little bit. So it's nice cool weather. It's these horses very excited. So when this group first came out, they were running around. Now they've settled down in their paddock. So all three of the foals that are in this paddock we'll see next. We're all born on April 6th. We've got one colt, two fillies. Let's see, we'll go here first since she's closest to the fence. We've got lots of into mischief foals this year. One out of Valadorna, that was her first foal. So here's Rachel's Valentina. She may come over, come over to say hello. There she is. <laughs> so Valentina had a curl in Philly this year. Back up a little bit. So this is Valentina's third foal. She's one of two grade one winners that are in this paddock. She's the daughter of Rachel Alexandra, of course. She's also by another Preakness winner, so she's by Bernardini. This Billy, really, this is her third foal. She's the foal sister to a two-year-old we have in training. His name is Alejandro. I mentioned she was born on April 6th. Both mom and baby are very friendly. So we've got a lot of foals by Curlin. We also have a lot of foals by Good Magic this year. Supporting Good Magic in his first year at stud. We did support Good Magic in his first year at stud. These are his first foals. <laughs> Hi, sweet filly. So these are the youngest foals that we have on the farm. First was born in January, on January 16th. These guys were born on April 6th. So we'll move to our next pair here. That's a filly. This next foal is a colt. He's the one colt in this paddock. Say Medagliadoro colt. It's very hard not to reach in and pet them. This is a Medagliadoro colt. He's out of a mare named Coral Sun. So she's by AP Indy, the late great AP Indy. It was a fantastic sire, as well as a very good broodmare sire. Coral Sun's already the dam of a graded stakes winner named Champagne Problems. She won the grade three groupie doll stakes. She's also the dam of a horse named Fire Coral, who's an up and coming three-year-old filly. She's trained by Steve Asmussen. She's won two of her three starts. She won her last race by three lengths. This is her, <laughs> her half-brother. Hi, Coral Sun. Can I show them your little face? He looks a lot like Mom. Hi. You guys have any questions about this pair? move through our last pair here standing a little further away she may come and say hello this is dreaming of Julia hey, dreaming of Julia she's a grade one winner she won the frisette stakes she also ran a monster race in the Gulfstream Park Oaks she won that race by over 20 lengths she was by AP Indy. And she's got a Curlin filly this year. This filly is a full sister to a filly that sold last year at the Kima September sale for over a million dollars. So she's got some big shoes to fill. Oh, I can pet them. I just didn't want to shake the phone for you guys. <laughs> yeah, these guys, when they first came out, they ran around. They had a roll in the dirt. They were clean before, but now they're <laughs> They're just enjoying their time outside. So 
So when they're first born, the babies weigh somewhere between 100 and 120 pounds. And they'll, they'll grow as they get older. They won't reach about 1,000 pounds until they're yearlings. Hi, Coral Sun. These guys have just gone out. They'll come back in for their lunch. Because they're younger, they'll stay in overnight. As well as those mares we visited at first <laughs> that are still in full, they'll stay in it overnight as well. So when they get older, Kelly, they'll spend most of their day outside. They'll only come in for a breakfast and for a lunch. But these guys are under a month old. So they're, st they're still coming in at night. We do keep foals. We, would, we race a lot of homebreds. Alejandro is a homebred. It's a Valentina's first foal. And he'll stay and he'll race in Stone Street Stables. And Valentina was a homebred herself. So she was born on this farm. She was trained at our training center and she was trained by Todd Pletcher and she came and retired to the band. So we have 12 mares that are retired from breeding. We've got over 100 active mares. We have about 80 foals a year. The number will just change depending on the mares. I'll give you guys a nice shot here as well. So this is the paddock these guys have to look forward to when they get older. So once they get big and strong, they can all come out and share this big paddock. So some of these paddocks are larger than others. This one's about 30 acres. And so speaking of virtual stables, if you're looking for these foals down the line, you're waiting to see if they've been named or you want to follow what they do. So if you know the year that they were born, 2020, and you know their dam's name, you can plug that into Equibase, see what they've been up to, if they've been working, if they've been racing. So the pioneer of the Nile Philly, Rachel's Valentina's pioneer of the Nile Philly, she's at our yearling farm. She's doing very well. Here we go. I was hoping Dreaming of Julia might say hello. Bring her curl and filly a little closer for us. So 50 Shades of Hay had a Medaglia to Oro filly this year. I'd like to see her. We saw her in our very first live stream. Hi, little one. So the amount of yearlings we sell each year will change. <laughs> and she's very curious. So these guys are mostly getting their nutrients from mom at the moment. So they're far too young to be sharing in her food. I showed... <laughs> Hi, Julia. So they're not eating any of mom's grain just yet. They will eat grass. You're blocking my example, Julia. So in the back, you can see <laughs> Valentina's filly. will start to copy mom. She'll start eating grass as well. So that's how they learned a lot of their lessons in being horses as they watch mom. Yeah, a lot of these curlins have those back stockings like dad. These two both do. Oh good, the sun's coming out right as we're <laughs> getting close to the end. So 
So we'll make determinations on who stays in our racing stable later on. Right now we're just focusing on making sure these horses grow big and strong. And we're keeping tabs on them every day. So anytime they come up in the barn, run our hands down their legs, make sure they didn't pick up any bumps or scrapes in the paddock. We're also measuring their growth rates, making sure that they're maturing at the right rate. So I mentioned before, you know, we're acting as personal trainers for the horses. We want them to be the best versions of themselves. So this Medagliduro colt, since he's a colt, he'll probably grow a little faster than these fillies, grow much bigger. So he wouldn't necessarily get the same amount of food as Rachel's Valentina's filly. So when we're choosing stallions, we want a stallion that's going to complement the best features in our mares. So some mares will breed, it really depends on the individual mare when she's retired. Um, so she may breed into her 20s, some can. Others will retire earlier than that. So it's up to each individual mare. It is much prettier now that it's a little brighter here. So Mary may get a year off if she has um, a later foal, so it, we don't want to rush her to get back in foal, or if she has any sort of health issue that might prevent her from getting in foal. Oh, sorry, dear. We're always taking their health into consideration. We want them to be healthy and happy. Each year is an individual, each mare is an individual. So just because she had a foal last year, she's not guaranteed to have a foal the next year. If you guys have any other questions, I might end with this close up of the Dreaming of Julia Philly. Do you all have any other questions? So thank you guys so much for joining us. If you're looking forward to future tours, we have a full schedule on our website. We'll post a link next week. So keep an eye out. And like I mentioned, we save all of our tours as well. So you can go back through and watch some of the videos that we have. So we lead all the horses into the barn. The foals will be led with their mom. Thank you for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you guys in our next tour.